From the depths of the earth. Oh, God. To the crests of the mountains. Oh, it's a weird. These crusading grooms must rise to the challenge. I love that girl. I love her. To plan a wedding worthy of their betrothed. Oh, my God. What's he done? He's just struck my dress. These fair maidens are bound by contract to be legally wedded. Oh, no. But have no say in their big day. Is it just going to all be last minute and just rubbish? Oh, theatre. I need to get out of that. Can these hapless heroes marshal their armies? I love her, but she's a bitch when she's like this. Vanquish dragons. No! Do as your future mother-in-law tells you. And conquer all before them. Or will they be <laughs> defeated? I'm not doing it. Tonight, <laughs> survivalist groom Tom. If you get hungry, you can eat them, but you must never eat other berries. Puts his skills to the test. <laughs> to plan an ambitious survival-themed wedding. I need camouflage netting, stuff like that, to make it look like the apocalypse. On a beautiful remote Scottish island. Look at that. Born to be While his more traditional bride-to-be, Sue... I'm panicking now, because I'm thinking, what am I going to get? Wow. Dreams of a big day in a stately home. I could just cry because I want this so bad. He's planning to get back to nature. Bloody lovely. With a rugged woodland ceremony. It's awesome. It is awesome. Can this outdoorsy groom <laughs> pull off the wedding of a lifetime? Oh, yes. my God. Oh, Tom, Tom, what are they? Or will his wild dreams end in a nightmare? He's probably thinking, oh, my God, what's he done? He takes us to a forest in a big puffy dress. <laughs> In the freezing cold, in the middle of October. Stockton on Tees couple, Tom and Sue. <laughs> Slipped into each other's lives as an engagement party 11 years ago. Like that, yeah! Saw this lovely looking girl and I thought to myself, whoa, and I went over and I started chatting to you, didn't I? Yeah. And I showed off a little bit about my car. You made it out to me, had this <laughs> really posh, exciting, brand new car that had been ordered all the way from Italy. It was a Fiat Cinquecento, it was half a car, a little car. <laughs> But Tom's little car set them on the road to a big future. The minute I set eyes on her, I just knew she was for me. And every day, I love you more, and I didn't even think it was possible. He was very caring, and he would do anything for anybody. You are good. Thanks. I do love you. Now lovebirds Sue and Tom even work together, running their own business. That's a 995, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was Sue's hobby and we turned it into an arts and crafts business. Mm. Enjoy to get stuck, give us a shout. Yeah. Cheers. But if Tom's job was influenced by his fiance's hobby, his own hobby is much manlier. Tom is a survivalist. It's a little survival tin and you get a candle and a saw. And there's a compass, some wire so you can catch rabbits with snares and stuff. <laughs> It'll be fine, it'll be no, fine, no, watch, look. Right, no, Tom! Tom's got this huge um, idea that there's going to be some kind of problem and he's going to need to survive, so he has survival stuff everywhere. How cool is that? So Tom's prepared for whatever life might throw at him, especially since the birth of daughter Holly. Holly's birth was really, really difficult. Um, she was stuck inside, so for 50 hours. When they resuscitated, I heard her cry. All my emotions come out one go and I burst out into tears. Bradbury. It changed me on a core level. I think that's a, a lot of the reasons I'm into all the survival because I know that if anything ever went wrong, I know that I could look after her. Oh, careful. And she could get food to eat and she'd be warm and safe. Yeah. Tom knows he can provide safety, but there is one thing he hasn't been able to provide until now. Every time we try to get married, 
something crops up, Holly come along. Yeah. <laughs> so it's sort of like one thing after another. Marriage is absolutely everything to me now because I've grown up with my mum and dad always being together until my mum died. It was really stable and that's what I want for Holly. We've got a home, we've got a baby, we've got a great family. That is the only piece that is missing. Piece of the jigsaw, isn't it? Having waited so long for her wedding, traditional girl Sue knows exactly what she wants. So this is my mum and dad when they got married. I think there, I think that's Nana's mum and dad. Lived in the same road all my life. Got to be near my family, got to be traditional, just something elegant, lovely. All of our close friends and family there, everybody that's been there for us to be there. But for 10 years, Tom's dreamed of a wedding that's less storybook and more SAS handbook. It's going to be an adventure. We'll sort of put my skills to the test as well as allow me to organise an amazing wedding. We just want them to have a lovely wedding, but knowing Thomas, I haven't got a clue what he's going to do. He could do anything. He's a loose cannon. Is that what's over your head? <laughs> the wedding, to me, is metaphorical, and that's that we've survived a lot. And then that goes on there like that. And I think she will get that. At least I hope she will. <laughs> you must love me. I do love Sometimes I wonder why I do. You think by now he knows what I like, what I don't like, what I hate. The pressure is unbelievable. So the pressure is on Tom now to... If Honestly, if I get this wrong, I am... She won't admit it, but I am dead in the water. No, I'd make you regret it. I have no doubt in my mind. <laughs> it's time for the couple to say goodbye. Let me kisses. Yeah, give Dad kisses. On hand are their nearest and dearest. Baby Holly, two of Sue's bridesmaids, and Tom's mum, Frida. Bye-bye. She's an absolute darling, and I, I feel like she is a daughter, too, as I don't look upon her as a daughter-in-law. <laughs> Be strong, come on, cos you'll set me off, man. I love you so much. I love you. Just look after yourself and bloody... Just... I'll be fine. Just... I'll be fine. Mm. I'm a survivalist, man. <laughs> Don't forget to push your tape. Give Daddy a kiss. Mwah, love you. Bye-bye, Holly. Bye-bye, love you. Bye-bye, love you. Tom and Sue plan to have no contact until their wedding day in three weeks' time. <laughs> the first time you have been apart. <laughs> I'll be Aries. They'll be Aries as well. I'm hard. <laughs> hey, babe. Take a walk on the wild side. Armed with all the wedding planning essentials, Tom will be staying with best man Derek. Now then. All right, mate. Tom and Derek are old friends and workmates. And while Tom's an action man type, Derek's a little more cautious. My head is in a million different places, and Derek will he'll be the voice of reason. No, no. Go on, then. What's it all about? It's going to be survival-themed. Right. So going to bloody kill us, but I'm going to have them camping All right. in teepees. OK, yeah, yeah. We're going to um, have the wedding. Yeah. Uh, hopefully all going well. On an island, off an island on the west coast of Scotland. Me dad lived on Erid, which okay. is the island which I really want to go for. Pretty close to Scotland, but it's a long way in Scotland. Well, it's like, it? yeah. it's about ten hours altogether. Yeah. I can see a few problems, you know. I mean, I think the big one is actually just getting guests up to the wedding. Camping in October on a remote Scottish island won't be easy. I think that sounds really, really, um... <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I mean, it's really, really, it's really, really, it's really. <laughs> <laughs> Demonstrating his commitment to his survivalist theme, Tom's shunning creature comforts and camping out in the wilds of Derek's back garden. I used to do it when I was eight, camping in the back garden, but <laughs> not since then. I definitely prefer it in the warm. And it's not just the great outdoors that's worrying Derek. It's just the, the distance. Could be tricky, but hopefully, hopefully people will want the car. <laughs> Next day. Morning. And thankfully, Thomas survived his first night under canvas. 
but the realities of being away from his family are already hitting home. Missed Sue and missed Holly a lot. And uh, didn't get to sleep for a while because I kept turning the torch on and looking at the photograph. Still, this is no time for sentiment. Road trip, road trip. It's time to head off and plan a whole wedding outdoors, 10 hours away in Scotland, on a remote Scottish island, off another Scottish island. Erid is just off the island of Mull, and Tom and Derek will need to catch a ferry there tomorrow morning. The boys have spent the night out in the Scottish wilds, but they seem to be missing a few survival essentials. Forgot the tin opener, you know, so I'm gonna have to use a knife. Yeah, get, your, uh, get your proper tin opener out. I thought you were gonna use a key. Tom might be a little unprepared, but he's a survivor, and he's prepared to be unprepared. We've checked and there wasn't enough tent pegs, and so we had to improvise. The tent pegs are made out of a tree that I found over there, and I got my little knife and I whittled it down, and I'm proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> She'll not have any, any idea that we're here, you know. <laughs> Back in civilization, Sue is out with two of her bridesmaids, and all thoughts are on a more elegant day. George Clooney's just been married. You know, like a big celeb wedding. Says the dress that she's just wearing there was £1,125, and that's not even her wedding dress. I bet you'd get like a ten pound dress. Yeah, I'll come get a dress. I'll get a dress from Primark. <laughs> I don't know what you're laughing at. Your dresses will be from the market or something. Half price. That's if you're wearing dresses. <laughs> Do you think I'll have a big bash like he does? The other day, my cousin came up and he was like. You do know that Tom's going to have something like a stupid Star Wars or a Star Trek themed wedding. It's like, no, everybody stops saying this to me. I've just tried to think what he's going to have. I've just tried not to think. No, I wouldn't want to think. If I don't think, then I can't panic. I wouldn't worry, Sue. He's not planning a futurist wedding on a different planet. Or back in time to a different world. Our wedding planners have reached the ferry to the Scottish island of Mull. But it's soon clear that distance isn't the only tricky thing about Tom's survivalist wedding. I know my dad used to always say, oh, Mull, it's horrendous weather. Sometimes it's beautiful, sometimes it's horrible. I just hope, hope, hope we'll get it on a, on a beautiful day. I'm really starting to worry now. What have I got myself into, mate? Right over there. It's dark over there, but... Hopefully, it's just that changeability, isn't it? Yeah. As the boys drive across Mull, it becomes clear that the biggest risk to his remote wedding plans could be the weather. I think it has been absolutely pouring it down, mate. Trust me to pick bloody Mull in late autumn. After a long journey, they're finally within a stone's throw of the tiny, remote, and currently very wet island of Erid. They've got sheep out there and stuff. Is that sheep I can see on the side? They've got a few sheep, yeah, and, and on the right-hand side, there's the boat shed. That is where I want to have the, the party. Right. In that boat shed. Yeah. Brings back memories, mate. It's flooding back. I'd be, it'd be awesome if, if they say you can do it there, wouldn't it? But the weather may not be the only issue with getting married on Erid. It's privately owned, so Tom needs special permission. Hello, it's Tom. Is it possible to speak to Julia, please? His decade-long dream relies entirely on this phone call. Hi, Julia. What is the chances that we can get married on your island? So a too short a notice. Right, a year, eh? I've had me hard set on it for 10 years, you see. I just could never afford it. I could land on the back of your island and you'd never have to see me. We'd go to your high point, we'd have a little ceremony with, with ten people and then shoot off somewhere else and have a party. And you could all come. It's just absolutely devastating. 
I'm going to pass you on to my best man because I'm getting a little bit emotional. Here he is. Because he's, uh, he, he, he can't cope. Three weeks isn't enough notice. And just like that, Tom's island wedding dream sinks without a trace. He's been focusing on it for 10 years. He's going to want to find something different quickly now, I think. Just hope he can move on. I'm tired and I'm emotional and I'm stressed. I just want it to be perfect for her, do you know what I mean? Got me heart set on that so much as well, mate. Imagine if we're going to have it on a day like this, but a bit more sun. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Not as much wind, just beautiful. The next morning, after another night under canvas, Tom has a whole new outlook. I think I just, I built it up in my head for, for a number of years. Oh yeah, I'll get married on Erid, but when I think about it, it's not really that important, the island. In fact, I think I don't think it's important at all. What I think is important is getting married in a beautiful place with the person that I love. And Mull is one of the most beautiful places on earth. It's just amazing. Tom's decided to hold the big day on the Isle of Mull. But before our wedding planners head off to find somewhere suitable, have a wash in the tree, I think. Tom needs to survive his early morning shower. I get naked and I rub myself in the leaves and shake all the tree so all the water falls on us. I mean, it's pouring down anyway, so should be good fun. <laughs> What's it like in there, Tom? Bloody lovely. <laughs> cool. So, the Scottish Island Wedding is back on. But down in Stockton, sticking close to home, Sue's with Tom's mum, Frida, and family friend, Joan, showing them where she'd get married if she was in charge. Wow, Holly, look at this. Holly, isn't it beautiful? A local stately home. This is just perfect. And there's like so many memories here as well. There's memories of me being younger and with like all my nieces and nephews, and then when I met Tom, and we were always at Preston Park. It's a beautiful place, it really is. Oh, oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. But Tom's wedding plans are a world away well, 300 miles away, and a lot less sheltered. Set on having his survivalist wedding on Mull, he's on the hunt for a suitable location. I mean, look, look at that. And he's just found a rugged stretch of beach. First impressions of this place, mate. It's a breathtaking scenery without I a doubt. I think it is uh, absolutely but... unbelievable. If we can have the party in that building over there, yeah. it'll be brilliant to have the ceremony in the middle of there. But it would depend on the weather. I mean, sure, we're going to do something. I, I'm just really concerned about how exposed it is. I, you know, that, that's, that's the one worry that I've got, is how exposed it is. At the stately home, Sue is getting cosy and thinking of a weatherproof wedding. This is really comfortable. It doesn't matter what it would be doing outside, if it would be snowing, raining. As long as you were in here, it, you wouldn't have a care. It's really cosy, isn't it? It's, and it's warm. I don't know. I think if it was raining, it'd make it more cosy anyway, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Raining outside, but you're nice and warm inside and enjoying yourself. I love it. Up on the rugged coast of Scotland, Tom's survivalist wedding is coming to life. If we had it in there, mate, yeah. we could really make it look survival. We could put like um, camouflage netting on it and stuff, or mm. maybe it's up the sides, hang it on the front and have the insides all camoed inside and and old oil drums as barbecues. It's a bit slopey all around it, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. It as is. long as you've got somewhere to sleep, 
Yeah. Something to drink. Yeah. Food in your belly. Good yeah. company. Music, and you're warm. And you're with your friends yeah. in a beautiful place like this. Does it really matter the niggly pigglies here and there? It does a bit. For bride to be Sue, a wedding is all about the niggledy piggledy bits. I'd love like prawn cocktail starter, then beef and vegetables dinner, and then like profiteroles for your dessert. I'd love it to have all the traditional round tables with the white cloths over. There's just so much detail in everything, isn't there? Oh, wow. The boys have found the beachside campsite for the guest accommodation, <laughs> but are still on the hunt for the perfect wedding venue. Hello, I'm getting married. Yes. So they've come to a nearby farm set in acres of picturesque woodland. I love the idea of putting up the family in giant teepees in right. the campsite. Okay. So they'll stay the first night. We'll we'll feed them. And then the next day, me and Sue will get married. What I'm after, it sounds a bit mad, doesn't it? It does. Very, very mad. I'm, okay. I'm after a, a survival-themed wedding, because I'm into survival. Right. Okay. I, it's got to look the part. All so right. if it's anywhere that I get, I want to try and dress it up with camouflage netting and... That's no problem. And, ...and tables made out of big wire spools and... Fantastic. If I show you around here... Out the back of the farm, Tom's falling in love with the outdoors all over again. This is amazing. I love it. It's took my breath away, actually, really has. I mean, if you get a beautiful day and, and you're lucky and you, the weather's fantastic, then it's all going to be open air. If the sky's open, then the exhibition building behind you is literally a backup. It's a sensible option and one that appeals to practical best man Derek. But it's not exactly Tom's outdoor dream. I know it's not the sort of place you're looking for, but an indoor option. It's is... beautiful, but it doesn't say survival, but yeah. maybe it's the outdoor bit in the woods, mate. You need somewhere to think of as an inside option just in case it is absolutely tanking it down. And uh, you don't want to there be draggled so through with flowers dropping out of her hair, do you? So... If it's raining outside, you're going to be in here nice and warm. This is just everything it's, I want. Do you know what it is? It's so you. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm really worried now, and I could just cry because I want this so bad. Does he really know what I want? Sue's stately home dream has even made Tom's mother Frieda anxious. I know for years Sue's always said she wanted to get married here, hasn't she? Yeah. I'm really anxious. Part of us is thinking, it's my son, I know you'd pull it off. But the other part of us is saying, it's my son, and I know what he's like. <laughs> Oh, look at the little fairy stairs. Can you imagine bringing Holly up here, though? Take her up and... This is brilliant. This reminds us, it sounds really strange, but it reminds us of, like, Lord of the Rings or something, doesn't it? It's like... It's awesome. It is awesome. And what could be more awesome than a Hobbit-style bridal suite made from wreckage and driftwood perched at the end of civilization? This is unbelievable. Look at the boat. That's absolutely... <laughs> I'm, I'm gobsmacked. I'm speechless. I really am, I'm speechless. The smell of a wood stove as well. That's right. I, I'm yeah. not kidding, I could live in a place like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. This is so, this is so, this is really is so. I like it, I don't want to go to the other places. I like it. Decision made. Traditional bride Sue faces a Scottish woodland wedding and a nippy night in a secluded beach hut. Luxury. Well, at least compared to the guests, who'll be sleeping in teepees on the beach in October. You couldn't get more isolated than this place if you tried. We are literally as far away from civilization as you can get. This is the perfect castaway place, isn't it, really? Tom forks out on the first major purchase of his £14,000 budget. £2,380 for the entire venue. Thanks very, 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 very much. Which includes the woodland glade for the wedding ceremony, an indoor function room in case of bad weather, and the hobbity hut as a cosy bridal suite for the wedding night.
So, survival style wedding it is. Next day, by ship and by road, the boys take the long trip back to Stockton. And Tom's garden retreat. It looks like someone else could have used a few of Tom's survival tips. <laughs> oh, poor little thing. I'm sure he'll get eaten by something. But Tom barely has time to settle in when Sue desperately needs to get in touch with him. That's for Tom. Tell him to just keep calm and stop stressing. Oh. Tell him everything's going to be fine. Right, I will. She's got some huge life-changing news. But the bride and groom aren't allowed any contact, so Tom's mum, Frida, will act as go-between. I think he's going to be shocked. I think all the emotions he's going through at the moment, I suppose it's hard to say. But I do, I think he's going to probably cry. Can I have a word with you? What? What's up? Right, don't panic. Read that. To my amazing fiancé, Tom. I hope you are well, although I know you will be stressed and stropping, yes. She's pregnant again. Congratulations. Oh. Don't cry. I'm not going to cry. Congratulations. Do you want to have a baby sister or brother? I hope it's an easy birth. Jesus. <laughs> I hope she's going to be all right. It's great news, but also scary. After the complicated birth of the couple's first daughter, Holly. Will he be crying? Will he be happy? Will he be sad? <gasps> no. <laughs> oh, no. I don't think anybody expected me to have a second child. No way. I'm absolutely speechless, to be totally honest with you. I'm, uh... I need a pint, I think. <laughs> I need a pint. I think I'm gonna go and have a pint. So much for, like, mad ideas for a hen night. Um, we'll have to do something sensible, I think. Damn! I was gonna get out with that one. In need of a good night's sleep, survivalist Tom has caved in and dismantled his garden tent. With the responsibility of a growing family, as well as planning a wedding, Tom needs to be on top form. I didn't really want to, but I spent the night in a bed last night. And uh, it was the most comfortable bed I've ever had in the world. And I feel much better today. I still feel a bit under the weather, but I'm hard. He is hard, and he's got a wedding to plan for a pregnant bride. So, he's off to the survival shop. I'm after buying some bits for um, my wedding, and I need mess tins, plates, that type of thing. They're like £7 for two. Let's get it for 50 I, I don't want to have exactly the same. I want to, like, maybe mix right. them with some plates and... Yeah, I mean, we've got these old... These old-fashioned military yeah. issue ones. They're brilliant. I need camo and netting as well. That comes to £390. Brilliant. Thank you very, very much. Determined to make the most of his budget, Tom's making savings, turning pallets into outdoor seating. Now, I've bought the wrong size nails here, so what I'll do is I'll angle grind them off. It's a manly tool. In fact, I'll do it now. Isn't it, Chios? But when it comes down to it, even a hardened survivalist like Tom is a big softy on the inside. That's a lovely little locket, that. Have you got The reason I'm doing it is Sue's mum passed away, me, me bride. So I'm going to put a picture of her mum in one side and her mum and dad in the other. Nice. So at least our mum will be watching over her. Will you yeah. do us a deal on it? We will do you a deal. Instead of 42, you can have it for 35. Deal. Thank you. Appreciate you're that. Welcome. Cheers. You're going to make a girl <laughs> very happy. Tom's survivalist wedding is starting to take shape. So midway through week two of wedding planning, 
It's time to get his survivalist hairstyle into shape, too. I normally have bald head anyway. It's just I've been so busy over the last few weeks. I just haven't had a chance. And I'm too tight to go and pay, like, 15 quid for a haircut. Tom's gone for a budget-boosting army buzz cut because things are about to get serious with his toughest challenge yet. Buying Sue's wedding dress. How far will his survival instincts take him now? You know what you're getting, then? I haven't got a clue. What, I, what, I mean, what? I know a note about dresses. It's got to be white, though, I know that. It's well, got to be white. I might change your mind when I get in, mate. Yeah. Hiya. Yeah. I'm after a wedding dress for my uh, bride-to-be, and I haven't got a clue, <laughs> basically. Right. Is she curvaceous? She's pregnant again. Whether she likes bling or whether she doesn't or whether she likes lace, I mean, I don't want it to look like a pair of neck curtains. Yeah, sure. Um, although it would save me budget. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the three, I like that one. I do. Sue has no say in her wedding dress, but she's with Tom's mum, Frida, and family friend, Joan, fantasizing about what she would choose if she were in charge. So I want something that's going to, like, maybe be fitted and hide okay. my waist, but then puff out a little bit, but not like a big meringue. So, not like a big meringue. I like the detail on that. It's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. I like the way it goes out at the side. You do the Bruce Forsyth, give us a 12. Unaware of how Sue's body shape may be changing now she's pregnant, Tom's looking at dresses which offer little support. It looks really nice, actually. Worried about you both? Yeah, well, they're growing at the minute as well. <laughs> so it's just all ridiculous. So I think I'd feel comfortable with something like that. Maybe a bit like more that. secure. Well, what we'll do is we'll try a strapless one as yeah. well. Yeah. And then try this and see how you feel, see what you feel more comfortable yeah. in. Yeah. Oh, oh, God. God. See? Oh, I keep putting my hand on my mouth. I love this hand. one, and I love the bling, but it's quite tight around my stomach, and you can see a bum. Finding a wedding dress when pregnant has its challenges. You can see it. Yeah, it is. It's it has got, got a bump on that one. that one. That's my boobs, isn't it? The groin. Oh, is it to this can one? you imagine if you picked, like, the one yeah, that's... I'd be devastated. Yeah. Yes. She's got big boobs, so will it not make her look well, like she's hanging out? It depends if she wants to cover them, or you could always put a piece across. Sure, I don't think she'll want to cover them, but she'll not want to look like... You were the best to judge. <laughs> God damn <dear. laughs> No pressure. <laughs> Screw then, Tom. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> Beautiful. But she's finally found a dress she loves. I love it. I feel so happy. I feel so confident in this dress. And now I'm getting really, really excited. Oh, look at this one. Meanwhile, the boys are seeing double. <laughs> Two of ones is too much. <laughs> I really like that, actually, because it's really elegant and really nice. Elegance is good for a wedding dress, I would yeah. say. It's, uh, that's a good, good emotion to have when oh, you're looking geez, at one. that's what we're going to do. So the decision is between one strapless dress and another strapless dress. How will he survive? <sighs> what if Tom gets it wrong? Oh, just what are you going to do? What Don't would you know. do? Would you still wear it? I'd have to wear it because he's chosen it and it's what he thought. Now I'm panicking now because I'm thinking, what am I going to get? I really like that one. I love that princess dress. That is so stylish, that one, and so beautiful. Decided, I like that one, definitely. That is amazing. Tom's picked a dress, full in the skirt, fitted at the waist, with little to no support for his pregnant bride-to-be. Oh, come on, darling. No, don't apologise. I've been telling her anyway. It's just been an emotional roller coaster, I think. But I think that's everybody. made her feel better today, though, seeing the dresses. Obviously, she wants her mum, which, you know, that's normal. Wedding dress challenge complete, and Sue's dress, shoes, and accessories are in the bag 
for just over £800. I'm absolutely buzzing with that dress. I think I've got a good price, although it doesn't leave much in my budget for five bridesmaids' dresses. Buying a dress for one woman was tough enough, but for five, it's even harder. And with time and budget running out, Tom and Derek go on the hunt for the bridesmaids' outfits. Oh, mate, what am I going to do? What do you reckon, Tom? Something like that's bright. They're going to look like prawns. <laughs> what about a nice floral, uh, floral things? <laughs> hey, now, this is the one, mate. I've got it. <laughs> Any bridesmaid would feel really special to wear that uh, to a, a main event. For man's man Tom, women's fashion isn't his area of expertise. Luckily, best man Derek is on hand with some practical advice. My experience of going to weddings is the bridesmaids are always dressed in paching over the top colours anyway. It seems to be the way it is, because then the bride looks nicer. <laughs> it's, it's all about making the bride look great. The options might be limited, but the boys need to make a decision quickly. They might be nice on, but we've no way of telling that unless we buy you them to it. Praise and, uh, that man. And a bargain's a bargain. Back at Sue and Tom's shop, the bridesmaids, including Sue's nieces Kelsey and Becky, have assembled to try on their £11 dresses. If they start, just didn't come in the jeans and the T-shirt, I'm not bothered. As long as Sue looks like a princess, that's all that matters to me. What will the girls make of their discount pink numbers? Oh, my God! Oh, Tom, Tom what are they? <laughs> No, that's horrible. <laughs> Just try them on. I don't know what sizes are, but there's I'll a few for you. I've got different sizes. They look beautiful on. I'm not being horrible. I wouldn't even wear that to a job interview. <laughs> Becky, man, it's not as bad as you <laughs> think, man. I don't, I don't think you've tried it hard enough. I have been everywhere. I have worked my balls off. Yeah, but you know what a bridesmaid dress looks like. It's not... <laughs> Like, it, you probably it's a bloody different you wedding. Know. You've probably gone to boring weddings. We're talking about oh, me, you know. No, Tom. It's not a bridesmaid dress. Stop like, it's go not and a just, bridesmaid dress. Just not bridesmaids' dress. dresses or whatever the hell I want them to be. Now, go and try them on, and I'll come back. Bloody hell. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. I've tried. I'm a bloke. How, how was it going to turn out? It was going to turn out crap. You know, I've got enough on my plate, to be totally honest with you. It's a nervous wait for the girl's final verdict. Don't say they look good, Tom. They look all right. <laughs> really? <laughs> they look lovely if you saw them. I can see them, Tom. I'm I can see them on other people. Are you going to wear it for so often or not? Are you going to wear it or not? You're making it like... Are you going to wear it? For Sue. Are you, well, it is for Sue. Who else is it for? It's not for me. Tom has no idea if the girls will wear the dresses or not. I'm trying my best. If it's not good enough, then buy their own dresses. I've only got a certain amount of money. So, time for an urgent budget check. Be able to save some money there. We're going to get them to jump on the bus. Having shelled out on camping gear, supplies, and three giant teepees for the guests, there's just over three thousand pounds left to pay for all the transport to the island. Still, at least Derek's got the cake covered. I've got no experience making a wedding cake, but apparently it's exactly the same as a Christmas cake, and I make a Christmas cake every year. Well, that's that sorted. Derek might be in charge of baking. But Tom's determined to have his cake and eat it when it comes to the bridesmaids. Please, please pick on the bridesmaids. And he's got a spooky hen do in mind. That would be so funny. Scare them as much as you want. In fact, the more you scare them, the better. Tom's booking separate coaches to take the bridal party and guests to Scotland. But he wants to keep the destination under wraps. And he has a cunning plan. Can you shut the curtains on this bus? You can, yeah. Is there a way where we can shut the curtains so they don't know where they're going? 
not on the windscreen. <laughs> oh, yeah, I never thought of that. That's a bit of a stupid idea, isn't it, really? <laughs> that was a blonde moment. No offence. <laughs> Tom books a coach for his guests, a minibus for the wedding party, and a ferry to get everyone to Mull for the princely sum of £2,300. Taking a huge chunk out of his already dwindling budget. With the wedding just three days away, Tom needs to be heading back to Scotland to prepare for his outdoor wedding. But all plans are on hold. Hope to God everything's all right, bud. And all rules are set aside. So the bride and groom can both attend an early scan. You all right? <laughs> because of the complications at her first birth, Sue's pregnancy is considered high risk. Okay, just set me off. <laughs> I'm really nervous about this. You're all right, I'm with you. Right? We've got to see a consultant and I'm classed as high risk as all these births. <laughs> It's a nervous moment for the couple. So does the baby, in your opinion, look healthy? For this stage, it looks perfect. Oh, thank God for that. It's beautiful. Okay. I'm yeah. so relieved, so... Fine. Are you all right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you not realise how relieved I feel? You're not the only one. <laughs> what the hell? God, look at this oh. I'm married. I'm tough. There's been no mention of the wedding, and Tom's happy that Sue and their baby are safe. I feel like I have got a house lifted off my shoulders. Now I can try and organize a wedding. <laughs> Everything's all right. And there's a photo of uh, Uncle Jamie to have a look at. He now takes the long journey to Scotland to put the final touches to his remote, wild, woodland wedding on the Isle of Mull. After the good news of the scan, Sue can enjoy a night out with her mates. Right, Kels, you've got your bag. Tom's organised a hen -do in York, starting in its famous dungeon. Everybody getting picked on <laughs> was good though. I think we've all enjoyed it. It's been really good. The hens have survived the ghosts and now they're moving on to the spirits. Except Sue, of course, who's sticking to the soft drinks. I did not expect to be in York. I expected to be in Stockton somewhere in a really cheap pub. So I'm really proud of him. He's done really well. And now I'm just excited to see what the wedding's like got to bring now. Sue loves Tom's choice of venue for the Hindu, but how will she feel about a remote island in Scotland for the wedding? <laughs> Next morning on the Isle of Mull, and Tom's vision of a survivalist wedding is coming together. Yes! Woo! We're here! Yeah, look, uh, our cooler, <laughs> they are amazing. With just 48 hours to go until the wedding. Do you want to come over and see yeah, what man. we're stealing? The sun is out, spirits are high, and the teepees are up. Back in Stockton. Oh, are you nervous? Are you nervous? <laughs> Sue has no idea she'll be getting married outdoors on an island. But she is about to see the dress she'll be wearing on it. She hoped to feel like a princess. So what will she make of Tom's choice of dress for her big day?
300 miles away on the remote island of Mull, the lack of phone signal is proving tricky. Tom, Tom, have you heard anything from Dr. Sue? She was putting the dress on this morning, wasn't she? Oh, no, I haven't heard anything. Uh, no. I've got no reception, have I? We need to find a place with a signal so that we can uh, check this dress out and make sure that it fits. Oh my god, I don't know if I like it. It's so 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 it's it's so 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 it's I hope we got the right one. I'm, I'm well, absolutely. If she, if she doesn't like it, it just proves what we knew all along that neither of us have got any death dress sense to us. No, but that's <laughs> no good. It's a wedding day, man. It's got to be right. I love the dress, but I didn't realise how much it moraned out. Two, I'm not joking. It's better than the three you tried on. It is. It's just stunning. Oh, I've got it. It's so if you feel as if if you feel as if you're exposed, can they not loosen it up at the back a bit? It's not that. It's my boobs, isn't it? The groin. And you're gonna... That's going to happen soon. You're pregnant. It's just normal. I love this all. Will to ring. Oh, look, it's out of charge. Derek. <laughs> Maybe now's not the time, Derek. Don't lose your sense of humour. When that goes, you've lost everything. I've got no sense of humour until you I find out about this. Yeah, you're going to have to grow one again. Right. I'm going to have to see if I can get a bra that's going to, like, I don't know. Sue, you're not going to flatten them, pet. You're pregnant. If I bend over the law, I'm going to hit Sue. somebody in the face. When you mentioned you feel a little bit exposed here, yeah. Now, you can, we have our seamstress here, so you can, it's up to you. You can put our gowns straps here, or there's loads of other options. Some of Sue's worries about the dress could be solved with some simple modifications, but at a cost. Hello? Hello, is that Derek? It is, yeah. Sue's been trying her dress on. Does she like it, though? Does she like the dress? Yeah. Yeah, she likes the dress. Yes! Sorry, how much? Just need some extra support on it, which is an extra 40 quid to get that fitted get on. Get it. Nice one. Bye-bye. Get in. <laughs> get in. <laughs> Tom's dad has arrived on site and is now dispensing outdoorsy wisdom. And it seems our groom might be a chip off the old block. It's very light, but split it in there, and then again... I'd love to take all the credit for it and say, yes, I taught him everything. But no, he's learned most of it himself. Meanwhile, self-taught Tom has an unexpected issue to solve. Getting drizzle out of a generator. Hasn't been serviced for a while. It'll be all right. If it rains, the thing to remember is skin is waterproof. You're not going to drown by sitting out in a little bit of rain. It's looking pretty amazing. Uh, we have, a, we have uh -huh. floodlights. Inside the TVs is pretty amazing. We've got the hay bales, and we've got fires. Tom's stag is about to begin with a bang. Whoa, look at that. Run! 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 Well, almost. Is that it? Yeah. Should have put it on the fire, Tom. That's rubbish. Ten quid that cost. Thomas. It's early morning, the day before the wedding. And the coach is collecting the wedding guests, but they still have no idea where they're going. You all right, sweetheart? Meanwhile, a minibus picks up the bridesmaid, Sue, and her dad, Colin, who have no idea how far they're going either. Right, can everybody put their hands up and say cheers? <laughs> Holly, say cheers. <laughs> that was a nice one. The bridal party may be in good spirits, but over in Mull, the stress of pulling off a wedding on a remote island is taking its toll on Tom. At the moment, Thomas is in his car. He's got a bit wound up. He built, he's built it up, I think, 
obviously the, the groundswell of you realize there's people traveling here everything's happening now at least it's calming down that's the main thing yeah. rather than blowing up but tom's survivalist theme has some of the stags worried about facilities or lack of them that over there it's just got a sink in it with cold water a urinal and a and a pot a toilet pot he's expecting oh, 40 odd guests the guests have been travelling all morning and still have no idea where they're heading. Are you enjoying it? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Oh, it's going to be fun. Lauren Thomas, I'm sure it'll be, like, a really good it weekend. It better be. Two, four, six, eight, two, eight. But on the bridal bus, Sue's concerns are growing. A little bit worried at the moment. <laughs> Wondering where it might be. We'll have to wait and see. See how far I travel now, and then I might get a, an inkling of where I'm going. Look! It's official! We're going to Scotland, ladies and gentlemen! The guests have made it over the border, but there's still a long way to go, which is just as well, because Tom still has one vital survival element he needs for the campsite. Bedding for the teepees. What a treasure trove. Got sleeping bags, blankets, everything. The budget might be almost gone, but luckily, Tom gets the bedding for free. Thanks to good old Scottish hospitality in the form of... What was your name, sorry? Hazel. Hazel has helped me out no end. That is such a weight off my mind. I am so... <sighs> Thank you. Give me a cuddle, thank you very much. Appreciate it, cheers. The guests have now been on the coach for nine hours. The journey's tedious, boring, tiring, and one off the bus now, please. And even Tom's mum's had enough. It'll be worth it, I suppose, when we get off the bus. Wounded boys? Yeah. Yeah. Are you tired? Yeah. But at last, they're off the coach just in time to start the next leg of their journey, the ferry ride to the island. I'm getting excited now. Yeah. So all right now. Oh, yeah, 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 so we won't be long. Hopefully, we're, we're not going to be long now. Luxury hotel, Thomas, aren't we? Yes, Thomas. Yeah. I've got loads of bedding. Well done, well done. With just an hour to go, back at camp. Blood. It's a dash to get the bedding in place. Got to pick the family up first, get them here. Would you want to take the van? Before Tom races off to meet the coach party and guide them on the final leg of their journey. Oh, hang on, I can see something. Oh, my God. Tom's in time to meet the guests' coach to guide them down the final dark, windy roads to the remote campsite. Right, it's a bit of a tricky road on the way there. There is loads of alcohol, lovely accommodation, and so it's going to be an absolute laugh. They're trying to talk about the weather, the weather. But just as the exhausted guests finally arrive at camp, so does the rain. It's a bit of rain. It doesn't hurt anyone, does it? I don't think that's going to make people happy, but, hey, I don't care. Kids are tired, draining, trying to get stuff sorted so the kids can go to bed. It's like the campsite, it's a bit different, but never mind. Patrick! But the relentless downpour is starting to cause problems. He's got the kids and they're getting wet. I've got no space. Can I have the key? I've got one space, can't spill the stuff. While the island storm is pushing Tom's dream of a survivalist wedding to its limits, over on the mainland, the bridal party are having a much cosier time of it. Here we are. So we're coming on. Yeah. Wow, Holly. This way, Holly. Darling, this way, darling. This way, this way. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my God.
Tomorrow night you'll be in a hobbit's hut. The following morning, the storm has passed and the sun is out for the start of the big survival-themed wedding. Saw the rain, they freaked out, and luckily we had organised digs, but it was in a village about 10 miles up the road. It was still raining at 1 o'clock this morning when, when I was still at work, so... I woke up floating in water. <laughs> so, yeah, I got soaked. The bridal party have arrived from the mainland, and Tom's arranged a hotel where they can get ready. With just hours to go, it's time for Sue to see those £11 bridesmaid dresses. What did I even look? Will this be a whole other storm? Oh, my God, I love this. Oh. I think these look absolutely gorgeous. And Becky, yours matches your lipstick and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I was not expecting that. I was, like, expecting some, like, big bouffant thing. Honestly, I love it. I think it's all look absolutely gorgeous. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. It's finally the moment the bridal party have been waiting for. Seeing Sue in all her splendour. It's absolutely massive. Oh, it's cute. I actually love it. Dad, do you like it? Super. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You look beautiful. Are we going to go and get married? Well, I'm ready. 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 Let's go, 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 go. Tom's laid on an open top classic car to take his bride to the ceremony. Everybody into the venue, please. At the Woodland location, the guests and Tom are assembled and waiting. But it looks like a storm is brewing. She'll come. She'll come. Outside, our bride's finally here. But Tom's idea of an idyllic country drive hasn't quite gone to plan. Oh, my God. I'm freezing. It's too bloody late for the umbrella now. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> oh, bless. Right, I think I'm ready to go and punch him in the face now. But I don't need any luck. He's going to get his head knocked off. Are you excited, Sue? Are you excited? Why? Because I'm freezing. <laughs> my boots are falling out. I've just been heel stoned on the head. <laughs> in a car that I couldn't even fit into. Look, look at the state of it already. Look, it's minging, absolutely minging already. White dress in the field. I mean, why get something so big and puffy in a bloody field? <laughs> bloody freezing. As Sue prepares to make her entrance. Do I just go straight in? The floodgates look ready to open. And that's just Tom. But the weather's not looking great either. Those storm clouds are threatening to put a dampener on all his hard work. After three long weeks in the making, the big moment is finally here. Why are you it wasn't meant to be like this. We'll talk this about day. later. Right, we'll talk about later. Tom, will you love, honour and cherish Susan as your wife the rest of your life? I do. Susan, will you love, honour and cherish Tom as your husband for the rest of your life? I will. Thankfully, the weather holds long enough for Tom and Sue to tie the knot. It gives me much pleasure to be <laughs> A splintered wife. <laughs> But then, 
As if on cue, the heavens open and the guests run for cover. We can't do anything about the weather. It's the British weather for you. Safely out of the rain, Sue gets to see the fruit of Tom's labours. Oh, my God. Has he done all this as well? But has she taken to his survival theme? Had to get survival in it somehow, didn't he? She's probably thinking, oh, my God, what's he done? A dream venue was probably like a stately home or something in some grounds with a park. And this is a... <laughs> it's a bit out there. I think I ballsed up, though. So what does the traditional girl make of her not-quite-traditional wedding? Do you like it or not? It's not what I had a chores. <laughs> Do you like it or not? Well, I'm with you, so I don't really care where I am, right? Thanks. Right. I love this one. I think he's done really, really well. He's thought of me all the way along, so he's had to get his little bit in there, so I'll let him off. Still a bit, like, a bit strange, but... Hey, it was his choice. <laughs> Leaving the wet chill outside, the guests get a taste of the outdoors indoors as they take their places for the meal. We're going to have to find some more chairs, Tom. A quick break in the weather gives Tom the chance to reveal the final survivor of his wilderness wedding. I love it. It's absolutely amazing. It's just, it's very you, isn't it? It is. I'm just thinking of poor Holly is squashed in there with us and... And getting it's down in a in here, It's roasting in here. No, it's lovely. It's absolutely gorgeous. You've done well. Really? Yeah. It's really <sighs> nice. At the reception, the guests are quite literally surviving, thanks to fresh food sourced from the local area and a lovely cake sourced from Derek. It is so Tom to make tables. It's so Tom to have leaves on a ceiling. I think he should be really proud of what he's done. I think it's very thoughtful, and I think that he has tried really hard. I don't know if people got the survival this wedding. I, I think they definitely got the fact that they needed to survive. <laughs> it's not the norm, which we wasn't expecting from Tom. You don't, if it's Thomas, you, you don't, don't get the, the norm. norm. No way. You make no the best way. of what you've got. It's good for us to have a good yeah. time. We've got no control over the weather. Rain, thunder and lightning earlier on, but that hasn't had any bearing on it whatsoever. We've thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. Tom planned a survivalist wedding to prove to his bride that he would always be there to protect her. Probably failed miserably because of the bloody weather. The heavens opened, thunder and lightning started. Do you know, at the end of the day, it's about me and Tom getting married, and that's all that counts. And thank you. You're welcome. We can't help the weather. We're in Scotland. And even bad weather can't put a dampener on the news our couple are about to reveal to their guests. I'm so glad to have this here. I know things haven't went perfectly to plan. But I've got one last thing to tell you. We're expecting another baby. <laughs> <laughs> Traditional bride to be Sophie dreams of a fairy tale wedding. I want it to be a nice, colourful, positive, happy day. <laughs> but wannabe hero Alex. I want that and then and the guns. Wants to show his love by scaring the living daylights out of her. <laughs> Will he be able to save the day? Why not look like this hero of the day to save my wife? Or will he get it dead wrong? Disaster.